Howdy, Mark Serbu, gun designer, gun nut. This is actually a re-edit of a video that I already put on YouTube and promptly gotten my pee-pee smacked for. So I've gone through and carefully and tastefully changed some things here and there to make sure it'll pass muster this time. Crossing my fingers. Now this is the round steel tube with lots of holes being made. And this first tool here is a really expensive through coolant carbide tipped drill. The insert alone costs 140 bucks. Crazy. Yeah, the drill kind of sounds like the world's ending, and of course it throws coolant all over the place, so you can't see anything after about two seconds. Can't see squat. Okay, now after drilling all those holes, we go back and circular mill or mill bore the holes. Mainly done for deburring more than anything. And yes, normally there's coolant blasting all over that, but I turned it off so that I could get some good footage here. Any software nerds here? Check this stuff out. A while loop. Yeah, this program would have been huge with all these stupid holes, so I just made it easier by putting a, just a simple routine to drill the holes and then put variables in there for all the hole locations. So that's kind of cool. If you're a nerd, like I am. Now in this operation, I'm using a 45 degree chamfer tool to chamfer the edges of all the holes. If you'll notice, the cutter isn't doing a normal movement here. It's not just going around in a circle or going up and down. You'll notice the tube itself is actually rotating. If these holes were on a flat sheet or if they were on the side of a rectangular tube, it would be no big deal to chamfer the holes. It just would go around in a circle. But because these holes are on a round tube, it's not that simple. We either have to move the tool up and down as it goes around the circle, or we fix the cutter in height over the center of rotation of the tube and move the cutter along this axis as we rotate the tube. And that's what we're doing here, using something called axis substitution, or cylindrical mapping, as Haas calls it. Bottom line is that you've got a nice, smooth, chamfered edge around the edge of these holes so that when you're holding on to it, you don't rip your freaking fingers off. I know, why didn't I just say that in the first place? Where are you going? So the holes look great, nicely chamfered, smooth enough, but there's still some little imperfections inside and out, so this isn't the final step for the round steel tube with lots of holes. This is a vibratory deburring machine, and I hate this freaking thing. It's, I don't know, I mean, I, I can't hate it, but I, uh, I sort of hate it. On one hand, it's a fantastic labor-saving device. Just the stuff that it does would take a person just hours and hours and hours, and this, this does it in a lot less time. And the results are just fantastic. But it's just soul-crushingly loud. And there's a storage tank in the bottom that holds the liquid that circulates through there. And man, it's just, it, it has stuff in there that you can't even describe. It's like toxic waste mud and just, ugh, it, it's awful. That's where the heat comes in. After that, the part gets sandblasted and maybe you get some other stuff welded onto it. I don't know, maybe not. But uh, it's all done at this point. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Please like, subscribe, and all that great stuff. And I appreciate it.